Hello everyone, welcome once again to the Adventures Travel Club television show. Benny and I are standing uh, with the Aegean Sea in our... In our backyard. In our backyard, right. Yes, That's exactly where it is. Anyway, uh, we want to welcome you to Greece and this exciting adventure that we have for you today. So, don't go away, because here we go. And Betty, we start our exciting adventure at the Baptistry of St. Lydia. So, for those folks that don't know about St. Lydia and, uh, and St. Paul, we're going to get an explanation here, and this was a little place that was outside the walls of the city of Philippi, and I didn't even know that this place existed until we stopped, and it's, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. But and Marv, it, you knew about it because it's in your Gospels. That well, that's are, true. That, but not I, Gospels, in the Acts. Yeah, but I didn't know that this was the you place know where it was. You know, it was there. Right, okay. uh -huh. Anyway, we're going to listen to our guide now it was as she explains. Synagogue. Paul left from the city, took a walk right here in this area, outside the city walls we know. Uh, and uh, he met with uh, a group of women that were there discussing right next to a river. Now there is a small stream of river right here, we will see it in a while. And we are definitely outside the walls, the west walls of uh, Philippi. Um, and this is reconfirmed also by what you are looking behind me. Um, you're looking at behind me. Uh, this is um, uh, ruins of a Roman cemetery, okay, and the cemeteries were always extra muros, in other words, outside the walls. Uh, there are sarcophagi, there are various uh, uh, monuments uh, for these uh, funeral monuments, of course, tombstones, and um, that's why we combine all this and we say that probably this could be the place where uh, Paul met with Lydia. She was a woman from Tarsus in, uh, um, in today's Turkey, Asia Minor, and she was here selling a purple cloth that was very expensive, a very expensive material. And the purple dye was uh, the uh, precious thing about it, um, that was extracted from shells, seashells, a certain type of uh, seashell from the sea. And, um, of course, it was only uh, wealthy aristocrats and uh, important people who could buy that purple cloth. And she must have been a widow, since she's uh, the one who is conducting all the business uh, and this kind of trade. And uh, she brought him to her household, and that's where she was converted. As I said, she believed in him right away. And um, now here, uh, they started just a few years ago um, digging for building a church. And that's when they came across these Roman ruins. And finally, instead of building a church, they decided to build that um, <laughs> edifice you see, which is a baptistry only. So the only uh, mystery that we hold in there is baptisms. Uh, there is something strange happening, and it has to do with uh, that uh, deep conviction uh, that we have as Greek people regarding our Orthodox past. Even people who don't really believe or practice you will see them very frequently baptizing their babies before you get into the actual church to, uh, to um, renounce um, the devil, everything that is evil. You blow, um, you, um, with your, yes, you blow three times, you speed down three times, you know, this is renouncing, as I said, the devil. And you finally say the Christian uh, creed. And then you proceed into the church and um, the parents and the mother especially do not approach from that point onwards. They are not anywhere near the baby. It's the godmother or father and the priest. And um, it is the priest who will exactly take the baby and put it inside the water. It's not a very pleasant experience for most of the babies. They will usually cry. If they don't, we say that's, that means good luck for the godparent. <laughs> and um, have superstitious things. And, um, uh, finally, when the baby comes out, the priest will cut some of its hair, uh, creating the sign of the cross here, 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 and here. And the baby will also be anointed with blessed olive oil, um, the sign of the cross here on the forehead, and also uh, here, we will, if we will put some uh, oil here, and in the vital parts of the body, the genitals especially, and the whole head. And the baby must not be washed uh, for at least 24 hours because this is blessing that receives. Well, okay. And finally it comes back to your arms and uh, then they go and they dress it. And you know, I mean, it's a life duty, uh, uh, an obligation, a kind of a duty that lasts for a lifetime. 
uh, you will present always gifts uh, in the big important feast of uh, Christmas, Easter and of course on its name day or birthday and you will be there. Betty, I think this baptistry was very, very beautiful. Don't, don't you think so? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, at first I thought it was a church from the outside. It looks, uh, well, of course, it's made of marble. I know Marva found it interesting in her conversation about how they go at Easter. How many, three times that, that they Easter, do that. feast day, and, and Christmas. Yeah, yeah. They, we, have, we have an expression for that. We say they are matched, hatched, and dispatched. <laughs> the three times you go to church. Right. Now we're going to uh, hop over into the city walls of the old city of Philippi. Of course, in St. Paul was so... Uh, figured so much as far as our Christian history in here, but uh, you know the history went way back before the Christian era uh, As far as Philippi was concerned and we're going to listen to our guide as she explains right it that, right on that side At the corner the corner building to your right would be the Senate house Okay In the middle further down on this narrow side We would have a basilica now the basilica is a building that the Romans built, created first. We, when we hear basilica, we think, it, we think of it as a church. It was not a church in the beginning. The basilicas were big, rectangular, spacious buildings that had a public purpose, uh, served a public purpose. They were low courts mainly, or they were places for the imperial worship, all those Roman emperors. So that basilica over there was a law court, we believe, uh, for, uh, exactly, for trials. And later on the Christians, of course, will borrow this type of building to build their own churches, okay? And that's why we think of them as churches. But the Romans create them first and they use them as law courts primarily over there. And finally, at the other far corner of this area, of the narrow um, side of the forum, we would have the tabularium which was a place uh, for keeping uh, the uh, city archives. Mm -hmm. um, on this narrow side, at the corner again here, the one closer to us, we would have a building that was uh, a temple for the genius, the genius <laughs> of the city, the spirit of go good fortune. Okay, they believed and they worshipped uh, um, uh, fortune, the goddess fortune, as well as uh, the good spirit of the city, uh, a lot in the Roman years. They believed, exactly, superstitious people, they believed that this was what protected their city and offered um, and the well-being to the people. And then, right next to it, the central room, and you see there, there is a stone portal standing. Hmm? You see it? This would be the entrance to a library. So we know that that's where they would have the library. And finally, we would have this long side of the forum. You see some columns standing here. Uh, on that side, we wouldn't have really anything. There would be just a colonnaded portico, a roofed porch. That's the column supported exactly that roof. Uh, used um, uh, by the people who would frequent this area, they would go just down there to uh, see each other and be protected by the sun or the rain, okay? So there were, there were no buildings, actual rooms in that area. Um, now, in the area where we are standing, we have the bima. That's something that you will always find in the forums. Um, uh, um, a platform for speeches, as I said, a speaker's platform, a pulpit in other words. And uh, as I said also before in the bus, that's a place that was used uh, for announcements they would make. Um, the authorities of the city uh, would do this or um, they would uh, offer certain, uh, uh, they would honor certain eminent citizens. This is where they, you could have even a trial or a kind of a mini election being held. In this, right in the middle of this area, in a public area. So this is where we would have the BIMA. You realize that it is very possible that all those uh, happenings, those events I mentioned before about Paul, um, uh, being brought here by the, the masters of that uh, a girl that was a slave who, who was a fortune teller and being accused of the authorities and all this turmoil could have happened again here like we think it happened also in Corinth we have the, the acts that talk about all this and uh, the other very important thing of course is this area on which you are standing 
you are standing on certain stones sorry. that belong. No, don't be sorry. It's very important. This is the main road, the main avenue of the city that would go from west to east. Uh, the main, that main avenue of every Roman city with this orientation, west-east, uh, was called the Cumanus Maximus. And there would be also parallel roads in the whole city. We will see the parallel road further down. So in this case, however, the Decumanus Maximus of Philippi is that very famous Roman road via Ignatia. Miliaria, you have the word mile from the miliaria. Uh, this would be um, stones with information about stops, about nearby temples and of course inns and hotels. Every 1,000 feet, feet of course of that period, not the ones that we have, we measure now, with which we measure nowadays, they would um, have uh, uh, certain stops. So every, you see in regular distances, they would have stops, inns, hotels for the travelers who needed this. Many Roman emperors founded colonies along this road and of course uh, they repaired it, they, um, they took a great care of this. A Roman road it, it is, is not just uh, stones that you see on which you are stepping, it was much more a very careful work that the Romans did. Of course the Romans were great builders generally speaking. And here you see what existed underneath also. I mean we start from a layer with sand and um, lime then we move on to another layer here with stones that are in, um, uh, in clay, uh, in lead, in, lead in clay, lying in clay. And then you have another layer of smaller stones with broken tiles. Finally, the uh, one layer just before the stones is uh, again uh, sand with gravel and then you have the uh, pavement with these flat stones, the cobblestone. Well, but it's absolutely amazing to me how the Romans had built those roads, I mean, with layer upon layer upon layer. Of course, you had chariots going over those things. You had Roman soldiers, legions of them marching over there. So I guess they had to be pretty strong. Well, we have we do <coughs> the same thing ourselves today. We put the gravel down and we put the something, something, something down. I guess we learned very well. We learned right? from them, huh? Is, as you see, at least those stones, you see, they have all these details and here you see again the group with the hole. It is ancient material. I told you that they destroyed the uh, marketplace as well as the wrestling area in order and a Roman audio that must have existed here in order to build this church and of course they use the ready-made material uh, for these walls. Uh, however they didn't just use the material from this area they also ordered material marble for those columns that you see that has arrived, had arrived from an island uh, close to today's Istanbul, quite famous for its marble. The capitals, for sure, were ordered especially for this uh, uh, luxurious, uh, extremely well-built and beautiful church. You see the excellent work on the capitals with the acanthus leaves once more. Um, and uh, we, have, we have also the very typical masonry over there with the zones of stone and tiles in between for better stability this is of course all this would not be visible it would be covered with plaster now in order of course to support the cupola this basilica becomes shorter okay and that's why this is a, um, a shorter version of basilicas that we have because these people must have tried to uh, crown it with a cupola if you pay attention and you, uh, if you see carefully those uh, pillars um, you will see that they are thin towards the end. Uh, so this means that they were again exactly going towards the center, trying to support a cupola. One here in the nail, and one also cupola would be uh, right on top of the sanctuary. This is the holy altar, this is the sanctuary. You see that there is, don't move, don't go anywhere. You see that there is a clear border, this one defining the holy altar, the sanctuary, and an apsidal room back there. And we would have the narthex right behind this wall. Okay, and let me show you how this would look like, more or less. This is the cupola of the sanctuary, and this is the cupola of the nave, the cupola that would exist right on top of us. Okay, and this is the area as it looked like in the Roman years. <laughs> okay with the palestra and the forum, and that's what they built on top of this area.
So this is Basilica B. I mean, these are some of the first efforts to, to create buildings with a cupola. It is very difficult, you know, especially when they are very large. Um, and of course, they were trying clearly to imitate that famous example in Constantinople, the Hagia Sophia. We, we are certain that these uh, cupolas collapsed even before this uh, church was consecrated. So actually, it was never used. Um, uh, this area, uh, this building, because as I said, the cupola has collapsed. It didn't work out. It didn't succeed. Well, Betty, let's wander down the streets of Philippi to get to the other end where we find another church and a bishop's palace. Okay. Church of the city. Um, and um, we believe this, that uh, because exactly right next to it, behind what we see, we had the bishop's palace, a big complex where the bishop of the city of Philippi would live. And exactly, the cathedral and the bishop's palace must have been next to each other. Um, uh, also, uh, under that level with the mosaics of that octagonal building, uh, we have found, a little bit lower, a mosaic uh, where we had an inscription. An inscription that dates back to 313, approximately, after Christ, which says that the bishop Leontios made this in the praying house of Paul. So we know that right in that area they had built already even, even before, before the octagonal building a, a, a house of prayer for Paul. Paul converted a few people here. I mean uh, still it will take quite a few years until first of all Christianity is accepted as a, a tolerated in the Roman Empire. It, was, it is after 313 exactly that it is, it's, they started tolerating it with the Edict of Milan. Uh, Diocletian who issued this and uh, it started spreading and it seems that quite early already from the 4th century uh, AD we will have a large Christian community here and the bishop exactly for this whole area and of course Paul's presence I mean they take pride in being uh, a church uh, founded by Paul they believe that it is a church I mean still nowadays they have big celebrations in the area in Lydia as well as in Cavalla um, on the right wall of this building Thanks. There is a Christian fresco, not very well preserved, however. On that fresco, we have the representation of Jesus surrounded by angels, it seems. But as I said, the fresco is not in a very good condition. It seems that this room was turned into a place of worship, into a small church. And before the excavations, there was even a small church right on top of this building. Exactly because in tradition, this belief survived that this was the place where Paul was imprisoned with his friend Silas, of course. And uh, uh, now, what the, archeo the archaeological evidence shows is that this was a Roman water sister. It's not a big prison complex here, right. but that's what tradition says. So what I mean is that we cannot be certain, but people seem to worship this place as exactly the place where Paul was in prison. Uh, it seems that uh, in the early Christian basilicas, that those fountains, this whole place, was a necessity for purification reasons. Okay, and now you can follow me, please continue with me. Going to the narthex of this big basilica, still an area outside the church itself, and here you have the doorstep. Okay, that brings you into the narthex. Hmm? The narthex with nice marble floor, as you can see, remains of it. And there is, come this way. There is one room over there that has steps. There are steps in here, which means that this church had the second floor. Okay, they are right here, the steps. And there is also another room over here. Come inside. It's getting warm. <laughs> Exactly. We have frescoes that have been preserved. You see the plaster and 
We have tapes over here with various colors going up and down. It's very interesting to see that in order to create those straight lines and the different uh, zones with the different colors, they used a rope, um, a, a small, a thin rope, and uh, its marks are on the plaster, left on the plaster here. If you get closer, you can see them. And of course, all this decoration imitates marble once more. Marble, which is much more expensive, that's why they just imitate it uh, with, the, with the frescoes. We have pieces of, mar of marble on the floor. And again, this would be an entrance into a side room that must have been a baptistry. Betty, there's much more to see in Philippi, but you just have to go back and do it yourself. So we're going to go on to Athens because we have so much more that's waiting for us there. And uh, you've been to Athens before. I mean, you've, you've already visited the places where we're going to go yeah. up to the Acropolis and so then exciting. Then there's everything. I'm laughing at what you just said, though. What? You're going to have to do this by yourself, Betty. What are you going to do? Just No, no, no. I didn't mean that. I mean, did, oh, yes, go, I think you if did. a person wants to go see more of Philippi, they should, oh. they're going to have to go themselves. You're right? sure that's what you that's you all we're going to show. You're not just going to send me <laughs> off all by myself. No, 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 no. Okay. I wouldn't do that. No. Well, I would hope not. But uh, anyway, that's what it sounded like, and I had to have that clarified. Yeah, okay, well, let's clarify. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah, I have been to Athens, and I have seen such a tremendous difference when I first went, which was a long time ago, how, what the restoration, how the restoration has taken mm -hmm. place. Well, we're up here now on top of the, on top of the Acropolis. Of course, the Acropolis is a whole hilltop and you this know what is acropolis a means no a pile it, of rocks it, it, it's it no. you have an acropolis on the well i don't know if it means but there's up on the highest part of the city okay the acropolis All right. so they they would build these acropolises acropolis. Acrop <laughs> <laughs> and i never lie it's all Greek to me I but don't anyway know. they do build them up on the top of the hill and yeah. it's for fortification so the one there in athens is not just the only Acropolis, but it is oh, the no. most famous no, one No, you're right, yeah, because we saw many more as we traveled through Greece. But this one, the, the Parthenon up here had quite a history. I mean, it was, not only were the Greek gods and goddesses up there, but you also had other religions from time to time that came and took over as well, right? Yep. They, well, this is, that's the whole history of our, of ever, of the beginning of time. Right. Uh, I mean, you had Christianity up there. And you then had the Muslims Church, came, the Muslims and, came. And you know what? The sad thing is, each one destroys the other's works yeah. of art. What yeah. we consider art, the Muslims considered uh, 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 not almost obscene because we're paying worship and of course, to probably things, you what know? The, what the Christians well, saw of the of the of pagan the, stuff well, that the they same destroyed thing. as yeah. well. So, uh, yeah, it, and as it's, you say. It's, but that's the wonderful thing about excavations because mm -hmm. it does tell the story after so many hundreds right. of thousands of years, actually. And these pictures that I took here, this is inside the, of the museum that they have up on top of the Acropolis. And I was very impressed with this. They had things, I mean, you... They weren't behind glass, that type of thing. Mm. They had them right out there so that you could see and then but you could take touch. good pictures. You can no, look, I don't but think they so. don't want yeah, you to touch I, it, no, of course. Or put any graffiti there because there was graffiti outside, Even, you know, on the on the Parthenon itself, which was uh, which was too bad. And that's of course has been done over, I would imagine, you know, a few hundreds of years uh, as as people have come up there. And I have to say one thing too: when we got up there, uh, there were literally hundreds of people that were crawling all over that hill the uh not the literally tour ships, not literally the, the tour ships come in and this is one of the things yeah. that they rush the people off to but you do have enough time to where you can wander around up there after you've listened to your guide give you the explanation and you have enough time to spend up there and and sit and explore and look and i really appreciated that i thought that was great because so many times you know uh on on tours especially those where they have you know coming off the boat boy you've got 15 minutes here and then you're gone but for us this was, was wonderful we spent good. we spent a, quite a bit of time up here didn't well, it was we? a good hike up there too marv do you do you, i'm throwing a question at you and you probably it's too long do you remember the book that we read a long time ago about the archaeologist who did so much excavating there in athens yeah. What was this? Schmier yeah. Schmier Schliemann. 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 Was that right? Some, yeah, I think yeah. that was it. Yeah. That was the most informative book that I've ever read about archaeology. He also did the Troy, the city of he Troy. He did Troy. Remember? Well, that was his 
most thing that he was looking for was mm -hmm. for the lost city of Troy. But he explains so many of these things that if our readers are ever interested in, in pursuing this a little further, yeah. you can get it at the library, and it's excellent. And, uh, in fact, in one of the other episodes that will be coming up, we're going to show you the house that he built there, uh, which is right off of uh, the, main, the main square in, um, in downtown uh, Athens. And uh, now it's also turned into a, let's see if I get this right, numismatic New, uh, museum? Numismatic. Isn't that, that, doesn't that have to do with coins. money? Yeah. Oh, yes. Coins, yes. Right. I don't know. So if it's, it's a coin yeah. museum right now. Okay. So anyway. Marv, do you know the thing that impresses me about <clears throat> seeing all of these works of art is the beautiful bodies that the, the, uh, are being depicted here. The, the, they're fabulous. They, the, the men, I think, well, no, I shouldn't just say that, but the women, too, with their exquisite features right. and, and their bodies are so, so lovely. But, you know, you have to take into consideration, too, these people were doing a lot of hard work. Yeah. I mean, it's not, they weren't sitting there as couch potatoes in front of uh, a television set, you know, watching uh, and eating junk food. I guess that's right, and they uh, didn't have any Slim Fast in those days, did they? <laughs> But anyway, no, <laughs> but 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 to be so so beautifully proportioned, you know, right. you think about the transgression, not transgression, that from the from the I don't know the word I want to use from the cave age on to uh, each era produces different. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and now we're trying to get back to this, but you have to go to a gym to do it, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> of course, they had gymnasiums, too. Hey, listen, I want to say hello and a thank you to a friend of mine. Uh, it was my chemistry teacher in high school, Gilbert Ewan, who watches our show all the time, he and his wife. And I'd like to also thank him for the nice donation that he sent to Channel 49 as well. Uh, and I hope that he's enjoying the show today. Betty? These are beautiful pieces in this museum, and uh, as I say, I could go back and spend some more time there. But we have a lot more to see, lots more to see on the different episodes that we have here uh, on our uh, television show about Greece, and we're going to be doing that in the weeks to come. But before we do leave, we should mention that we do have other trips coming up, and if you're interested in those, all you have to do is give Betty a call at... 559-488-7443. And Betty will be happy to send you brochures or information on any of the trips that we do have coming up. So, again, if you are interested in that, please do give Betty a call. She'll give you the number again in just a moment. I just wanted to show you, uh, Betty, here that they have uh. really saved all of this. I mean, I'm glad that they took this out of the out of the elements because there's so much pollution in the air, even, of course, all the traffic that we saw in downtown Athens as well. And these things would have probably oh, have sure. been destroyed if they had been left sure. outside and not put into the museum. Yeah. So I'm glad that the Greek government has done this so that all of us and future generations will be able to see it. Well, Betty, that's just about all the time that we have, so give your address one more time. Or phone my number, address? Please. My yeah. phone number. My address, too, I can do that. But it's the phone number, 559-488-7443. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>